guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be part one on a mini series that I'm doing on budgeting. If you follow me over on Instagram, you know I'm always talking about ways to save money here and there and how our family budgets on a monthly basis. In the next few videos, I'm going to share with you exactly how we were able to save some money, pay off all of our debt, and even start investing over these last few years. I'm also going to be sharing some easy tips and tricks of ways you can cut extra expenses from your budget that might be keeping you from reaching your family's financial goals. Before I begin, I want to give a quick disclaimer and let you know that I by no means am any sort of financial expert. I did not graduate in finance. I am not a business major. I am not a financial advisor. I've just done lots of research over the last few years and through trial and error, I have learned what works for us and our family and wanted to share in hopes that it might help you as well. So just a quick backstory, our financial journey began probably six years ago when a friend of mine recommended we read Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. I read it and my husband and I decided we were going to start following his plan. Now I will say we loosely follow the Dave Ramsey baby steps. There are a few things he recommends that we don't actually stick to and I will get into a few of those things either in this video or the next videos but we do loosely follow the baby steps by Dave Ramsey. Even if you don't plan on following his steps to the T, I do think it is a great read, so I will link the book in the description box in case you're interested in checking that out. So today's video is basically going to be an introduction of how to start budgeting. I know there are so many videos on YouTube and online showing you how to do a monthly budget, but what a lot of these videos leave out is where to start if you're brand new. It's easy to do a monthly budget if you're familiar with the budgeting process, but if you have never done a budget before in your life, you can be left feeling a little bit of hopeless and at a loss. So I'm going to walk you through exactly where we started many years ago when we first sat down and created our very first budget. Also throughout the course of the next few videos, I'm going to be sharing with you the templates that I have created that we use when it comes to tracking our budgets, both on a yearly and a monthly basis. These will all be free printables that I will link for you in the description box below if you're interested in printing them out and trying to do your own budget at home. The final thing I want to say before I jump into the actual meat of the video is that for privacy reasons, I've decided not to use our family's exact financial numbers when it comes to income and some of the bills we have to pay. For me, it was just personal preference not to put our finances out there um, for several different reasons, but I will use some pretend numbers so you can see exactly how you can make it work for your family and the income and expenses that you have. All right, so let's jump right into part one of this budgeting series, which is where to start when you've never budgeted before. Okay, so like I said, the meat of today's video is going to be all about where to begin when you first decide it is time to do a budget. Now, as I mentioned earlier, reading Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover is a great way to get started if you have never done anything related to budgeting before because it is a very helpful book and you might get some good tips and ideas. So one of the first things you need to do in order to get control of your money and develop a good budget is to know what you make and where your money is going on a daily basis. So I created this yearly budget template to help you get started with figuring out where is all my money going. I wanna stress that this is probably the most important part of the whole budgeting process, figuring out where your money is going. This is a process that does take a little while, so don't expect to jump in and get this done in one day. This may take you several days or even a week, depending on how much time and effort you wanna put into it each day. I know it definitely looks intimidating, but I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to use this spreadsheet. So to begin with, at the top, you have the incomes for your family and then the total. If you need more spaces, maybe you have multiple sources of income or you work several jobs, you can always squeeze that in somewhere at the top too and then put your total income. Now, I like to use my take-home pay for this. Obviously, any money that goes towards taxes, we don't get to see or spend. When it comes to writing down your income, I also personally choose not to include any extras. So things like bonuses, commissions, extra income from side hustles, like maybe 
my blog money or Jason is a soccer coach and he sometimes does a little training on the side. Any money you might get for gifts from uh, Christmas, birthdays, things like that. And even tax refunds. I don't include any of that in our actual income because I like to do our budget based off of what I know is coming in on a monthly basis. And then I'll talk about what we do with all of that extra money later on in the video. Now, granted, we are both salary employees, so we have a steady monthly income. I am not the person to ask if you work solely off of commission. I know there are many other ways and many other experts out there that can teach you how to budget money when you're working off commission, but neither Jason or I have ever had jobs where we rely on commission on a month to month basis. So we budget based off of our monthly guaranteed salaries. Then it comes to all of your expenses. Now you'll see I have everything listed out by category and then I have the months of the year. I personally, when we first started doing budgeting, we went into our, we bank with Capital One. So we went into our Capital One online banking accounts and we printed out all of our bank statements from the entire previous year. So start by printing out all of your bank statements. You can do it online, but personally I think it's easier to print them out so you can scratch off and highlight and and have it all in front of you. However it works for you though, go for it. So basically what we did is we went through and we started with each category and every single month out of the year, we went through our bank statement and anything that related to these categories, we recorded exactly how much we spent in each of these categories. Okay, so for instance, we're in February of this year, so get February of last year. Start with it, go down and record everything you spent in February of 2020. Many of the things will be the same. So for instance, your mortgage probably won't change. You can go through and put the same number January through December for how much you paid for your mortgage. For us, we have an escrow account that covers our homeowner's insurance and our property property tax. So these two categories here would be left blank because all of that is rolled into our monthly mortgage. But I know some people don't have escrow accounts and they save on the side each month for property tax and homeowners insurance. So if you were one of those people, you would just put how much you saved or spent each month. Now property tax is paid once a year, so it might be zero for 11 months out of the year and then on the month that it is due it might be whatever your property tax is you would put in that, in that column you will see in a future video that we follow something called sinking funds to where you're not paying one huge lump sum only one month out of the year but rather saving a little bit each month for an expense that you know is coming up but we'll get into that in a future video so there you go. Go through and put your rent, your mortgage, your property tax. Home maintenance that has to do with anything that breaks in your house. So look at your bills. Maybe you spent uh, $200 at Home Depot in February. That was for something that broke in your house. Write it down. Anytime you had to call a handyman or something that went wrong in your house. Maybe you had to change light bulbs. Things like that. Put it in with the category it belongs to. I do realize some of the categories might be hit or miss. For instance, light bulbs, you probably buy that at Walmart when you're grocery shopping. So that might go in your grocery bill. But big expenses that you know, hey, that was something we did for home maintenance, put it in that category. And then I included an other category for any extra home expenses that you may have throughout the year. Same thing for utilities. Go through, write down your electricity bill. That is something that's gonna vary month to month depending on the weather outside. Your gas and heating bill, that will also vary. Your garbage bill, that should stay pretty much the same. We save a little bit each month and we pay our garbage bill quarterly. Your water bill, cable, Netflix, internet, cell phone, sewage, landline, alarm companies, termites, other. Anything related to utilities to keep up things in your home, put it in this category here. Now granted, not everyone has all of these things, so you may leave some of them blank, put in a scratch through or whatever, make it work for you. I also left a little blank section in case there's something I'm forgetting. I tried to think of everything, even if it didn't pertain to us, but I know everyone's circumstances are different. Moving on to sheet two, transportation. So everyone pays car insurance if you have a car. Your registration, you pay every year or maybe every two years. Uh, 
I have it written down. <laughs> gas for your first car, gas for your second car, and then again, car maintenance, similar to home maintenance. Anytime you had to get your oil changed or your brakes fixed, you get the drill. Write down how much you spent on that. The idea with this spreadsheet is to figure out where your money is going is specifically what categories you're spending money in so you know what percentage of your money you need to budget towards each category all right then we're going on to living and miscellaneous so things like groceries and household products cleaning supplies toilet paper all that good stuff how much money did you spend each month on eating out if you're anything like us this is one you will be shocked with all of those little small trips to Starbucks, to Chick-fil-A, you know, here, there, everywhere that you think, oh, it's $10 here, $10 there. When we first sat down and did our budget, we were shocked at how much we truly were spending every single month on eating out. All right, then we go into things like clothing, pet supplies, childcare and babysitters. If you're sending your kids to daycare, if you're paying for a babysitter once or twice a month so you and your husband can go on date nights or whatever, put that down. Tuition, school expenses. If you have a child that goes to private school and you pay a monthly or a yearly tuition fee, write that down. Uh, child support, that pertains to us as well as many, many other families in the United States. Date night, if you and your husband have a standing date night or even if you just go every few months write down how much you're spending on that activities and hobbies for you and for your kids allowance if you give your kids an allowance write down how much you give them each month medical expenses Christmas slash holidays so obviously Christmas the majority of that will be done in November and December how much did you spend on gifts on wrapping paper on if you had to buy a new tree or decorations, things like that. Other holidays throughout the month, maybe Valentine's Day, you got your kids some gifts or, you know, 4th of July, you got some decorations. I don't know. Just anything you know you're spending on Christmas and holiday, write it down. Birthdays and gifts throughout the year. Your kids will have birthdays, your, your parents, your siblings, any money you spend on birthday gifts and cards, write that down. We're a family that likes to take yearly family pictures. We also have young children that we have watch me grow packages for any money you spend on family pictures write it down grooming items so that can be anything from haircuts or um eyebrow waxes if you're a woman anything having to do with grooming razors all that other stuff put it in this category and then I left another category for other if there is something else I am forgetting. All right, then we get into page three. And this is where you will record any debt you have. So if you have credit card debt, however much you pay toward your credit cards each month, put it down. Car note, if you have car notes, put down how much you pay towards your car note each month. If you have more than one car note, add them up and put it down. Any other debt you might have, I don't know, store cards or student loans, whatever. Put it down here and how much you spend each month, write it down. And then I left a column for other, so things like gym memberships. I was trying to think of other expenses that people might have. We don't have gym memberships anymore, but we used to. That was one category we cut because we weren't even using the gym and we were wasting money every single month. So write it down, how much you spend per month. Monthly subscriptions, this is another one that we found we were wasting so much money on. So things like, for me, I had a FabFitFun box. Um, I had two or three different little beauty boxes. My husband had a National Geographic subscription, just little subscriptions that add up month after month, write it down. And then other, put it down. Anything left on those bank statements that you didn't scratch out as you went through and wrote down what you were spending, see what it is, see where it falls. So by the end of doing this whole spreadsheet, your 12 bank statements from the month should be completely scratched through. You should have itemized exactly where all of those dollars and cents went throughout the entire previous year. Now this section right here, investment savings and taxes. So any investing you did, write it down. However much money you invested each month, any savings, write it down. I am not a tax expert, but if you, if you have your tax taxes set up to where you have to pay when tax season rolls around, then write down how much you had to pay for taxes. We personally have our taxes set up to where they withhold the max each month so we always get returns at the end of the year. I know finance people tell you that is the worst way to do it because you're basically loaning the government your money. However, I personally like to get a refund every tax season instead of having to pay. 
I know the ideal is to figure out how to balance it out to where you're coming out even, but we like to have that little extra bit of money in March or April as a surprise, and then I'll show you what we do with all that extra money in an upcoming video. Okay, so step one is to go through and completely fill out this yearly budget template. Now, like I said, I am not sharing our own personal numbers, but I did go ahead and fill out a spreadsheet just to use for this video, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so here's a quick example of what the first page of your spreadsheet might look like after you've gone through all of your bank statements and itemized where you spend your money. So one thing I forgot to point out is that you have January through December and then you have this Y, which stands for yearly. So basically you add up how much you spend every single month and you get a yearly amount and then you divide it by 12 to get how much you would save each month in order to be able to cover your yearly expenses. So for for example, if I wanted to look at my water bill, I went through my bank statements and in January I spent $91.95. In February I spent $70.17. March $62.65. Go through and fill out how much you spent each month and add it up. In the past 12 months, we spent $673.65 on our water bill. We pay our water and our gas and heating all together, which is why I put a scratch through gas and heating. So basically 673.65 is what we spend in the entire year on water, gas, and heating. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna divide that by 12 and it comes out to $56.14. I'm gonna round that up to $57. So I know if I want to be able to afford to pay the water bill for the entire year, I have to budget roughly $57 each month, which I will get into in the next video. Okay, so basically you do that for all three of the sheets. I only did the first sheet for this example, but you will have all three of your sheets done. And then at the very end, you will basically total up all of your yearly expenses, so how much money you spent in an entire year on all of these items, put it here, and then divide that by 12 and see how much you spent monthly. And our hope is that your how much you are spending right here in this yearly column does not exceed how much income you are bringing in. If it does, we have a problem because that means you're spending more than you're making. And obviously we all know that is not an ideal situation. So that is the first step. Fill out this whole sheet and figure out exactly where your money is going. Okay, so I know this has been a lot of information to digest already, but there are gonna be two final quick steps that we do in this video that won't take us long at all. The first is to distinguish between your three types of expenses. So looking at your spreadsheet, you're gonna notice three different things. One is that you will have several fixed expenses. Now a fixed expense is something that does not change month to month. So, so like your mortgage, that will stay the same all 12 months out of the year. Netflix, internet, cell phone bill, those bills are paid every single month, but the amount you pay does not change. So what I would do is go through and quickly highlight all of those fixed expenses with one color highlighter. So I'm gonna just use yellow. Alarm company, okay? All those are fixed expenses. I know every single month exactly what I have to spend on it. Next is your variable expenses. These are expenses that you pay monthly, but you don't know exactly how much you are going to be paying each month. It changes from month to month. So things like my water, my water bill, I pay it every single month, but the price is different. My electricity bill, that is different every single month. My home maintenance, I may not pay it every single month, but I pay it often enough that I'm gonna loop it in with variable expenses because it is a different amount each month. And then finally, or my quarterly and yearly expenses, things that I don't pay on a monthly basis, but I know I will pay eventually. So garbage, we pay that quarterly every four months. That's gonna be in, in that category. Um, our termite bill, that would be paid once a year. So that would go in that category. Maybe things like things like your registration, um, car insurance, depending on how you set it up. We have our setup that we pay it every six months. So that would be um, a quarterly, a semi-annual expense. 
So go through and highlight those in a third color. That will help you later on when you are setting up your monthly budget. That takes no time at all. Just quickly look and see, based on your numbers, which category it will fall into. So quickly, once again, fixed expenses are things that don't change each month. Variable expenses are things that you pay every month, but that they do change. And quarterly, yearly, semi-annual expenses, things that you don't pay on a month-to-month -month basis, but you know they are coming up. And things like Christmas, you don't pay that every single month, but that would go under those yearly or quarterly expenses. Now, the final thing you're gonna do before I end this video this is something that you might want to sit and think about or that you and your partner want to talk about together but I want you to look at your budget especially if your expenses are more than your income you know right off the bat you need to cut something somewhere even if your income is more you might still want to cut things so you can save so I want you to go through and look at things that you may be able to cut. So some of the places that I recommend cutting from, obviously you're not gonna be able to cut your mortgage or your insurances, your garbage bill, all these fixed expenses. Most of those things are permanent. You have to pay them in order to live. Places that you can cut. Cable, that was a big one that we cut about a year and a half ago. We switched to Hulu, which since has gone up, and I am trying to convince Jason to cut that too because, honestly, we don't watch it that much. But we cut cable. I think our cable bill was up to like 170 a month. We completely cut that. We now pay for Hulu and internet, and we're saving maybe $40 a month. It's not a ton, but it adds up. Netflix, that's another area. If you're really struggling for pennies, cut that. You don't have to have that. In this day and age, you probably do need internet, so I wouldn't suggest cutting that. Your alarm, depending on where you live, if you feel safe without an alarm, personally, we have an alarm. If we cut that, it wouldn't be a huge deal because no one in our neighborhood where we live really ever even probably needs an alarm, but for safety purposes, you know, that's something that you would have to discuss and decide on. Um, other areas that are great places to look for to cut, groceries. So look and see how much you are spending each month on your groceries. I was shocked. Before we started budgeting our grocery bill, and at the time, granted, we were a family of three, our grocery bill was close to $700 a month. A month for three people, one of whom was only with us part-time, my stepson. It was absolutely out of control how much money we were spending at the grocery store on things we didn't need. So groceries is a way you can majorly cut your budget if you are not already doing so. Eating out, that is not a necessity. If you're struggling and you need extra cash, cut out eating out completely or limit it to once a month. Clothing is another area that maybe you can cut. If you notice your clothing budget is astronomical and you have clothes that are in your closet that you still have the tags on and you aren't even wearing, cut clothing. Obviously, you're not going to cut from pets or any of this expenses related towards childcare or anything like that. Date night, you can always cut there. Activities and hobbies, as much as you may not want to give up some of the things you love, sometimes when it comes to budgeting, you have to do that. Other things that aren't necessities are things like family pictures. That is not something we have to have every year. So if I would have to cut in that area, I gladly would. Amazon Prime, I could cut that. Obviously, things like Christmas and birthdays, you're not going to completely cut that, but maybe you cut back for a little bit. And then finally, gym memberships and monthly subscriptions. These are two areas that we completely cut and we were able to save maybe two to three hundred dollars a month by doing so. Especially right now with COVID, if you're paying a gym membership and you're not going to the gym ever, cut that. You can always rejoin later if you want to. Monthly subscriptions, they're fun to get, but they're not a necessity. And then finally, vacations, that's another area. If you're struggling for cash, you probably don't need to be going on vacations. I know you want to, but instead of going on big lavish vacations, you can think of fun, inexpensive vacations close to where you live that would be just as good. So that's just some ideas of where you could kind of cut some of you the money if you have to. Go through and mark it up. Put stars next to where you want to try and save money. All right, so that is it for this first video in this budgeting series. I know it's a lot of information to digest. Remember, this template will be linked in the description box below. There are also others online if you want to Google and look for your own that might be done in an Excel spreadsheet where you wouldn't have to sit and manually calculate all this. 
I am just a paper and pencil gal. I like to do my budget handwritten. My husband makes fun of me because yes, it does take longer, but personally, when I'm writing it out, it makes me more accountable for the money I'm spending and more aware of where my money is going. So that is just how I prefer to do it. So check this out in the description box below. If you're interested in budgeting with me, print it out, get started on filling out your yearly budget template, categorize your expenses into the three categories, and then store any areas that you think you might be able to cut expenses from, whether you need a little extra money or you just want to put more money into savings. If you enjoyed this video and you like videos pertaining to budgeting, productivity, organization, all that fun stuff, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.